Hello, I'm Paula Broadnax. And this, I'm, oh, you're okay. You go right ahead. That's okay. And I'm Gwen Black. And we are breast cancer survivors. And today we want to share some information with you because Gwen and I believe that breast cancer awareness is 365 days of the year, not just a month in October. And we are on a mission, I would say, would you not go in? Right. A mission to uh, just share all that we know and all that we can to those that are in need of the information. Uh, we believe that information is power. And Gwen's going to share more with you about uh, information is truly power because it arms you to fight the battle that might lie ahead. Uh, and we also want to share with you, in case you don't know, that early detection is the key. Uh, Gwen Black is one of the contributing authors to our newly released book, We Survive to Thrive. And uh, as a medical professional herself, she's a wealth of information and knowledge. But beyond that, Gwen is a three-time, yes, you heard me right, three-time breast cancer survivor. Praise and God. Amen, amen, amen. And look at her three times. So she is more than a survivor by all means. She epitomizes what this book is all about. We survive to thrive. And Gwen is indeed a breast cancer thriver. So Gwen, why don't you, without telling your entire story, share a little bit with our listening audience about your uh, contribution, your story to uh, We uh, Survive to Thrive. Okay. Um, first, I, I want to say that uh, God is truly faithful. He's been there for me through all of these journeys. Um, each journey, each time I was diagnosed, it was another journey. Um, and I actually, my journey really started when I was in my twenties. Um, I had, uh, found a lump in my breast and, um, you know, originally thought it wasn't anything. And, and it's, I noticed it started to grow. And I finally went and saw the doctor. And I'm saying finally because there were a lot of things on my plate at that time. Um, but they did surgery and the lump was benign. But I was told at that time that I had to be followed closely because there were some abnormal cells there that they found. And so I was about 26 years old. And what ended up happening was that I followed very closely with all of my doctors through the years. And because of that, each time that I was diagnosed, it was an early detection. And because of that, I honestly believe that's why I'm still here. If I had ignored things and not went to the doctor and had my mammograms routinely after that point, um, I probably wouldn't have found the first diagnosis and even the second and the third. Um, so it, whatever the doctor said, you know, I needed to do whenever they, you know, uh, wanted me to have mammogram done. I followed my doctor's office, uh, you know, my doctor's uh, request and had those tests done. And because of that, that's one reason why I'm still here. I really believe that early detection is very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's the title of your uh, story in our book? Um, my, my title is, is actually, you know, God, well, it, it's revolving, right? It's, it's really a couple of titles. Okay. I threw a lot of stuff in there uh, about the journey, but I personally believe that, you know, God has me here for a reason. There's a reason why I'm still here. Uh, and that's because God is not through with me yet. Absolutely. You know, he is not through with me yet. When he's through with me, when I have finished all, all of the things that he has for me to do here, mm -hmm. then I will, you know, make that journey home. Mm -hmm. But until then, mm -hmm. he still has work for me to do. Okay. And so that's the basis of my story that God is, is not through with me yet. Okay, and that's the title. Of yes, it. Mm -hmm. yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's a great story. It's a must read, and uh, the book is available in a couple of sources. And I'll share that with you at the end of the interview. 
<clears throat> you shared less than I expected you to, but that's all right. <laughs> Gwen is definitely a talker, but she <laughs> took heed and said, don't tell the entire story because like, right. she would talk on and on and on. Right, right, right. Um, I want them to buy the book and read the story. Uh, Not just my story, no. but the all of the contributors to the book because Absolutely. we all have fantastic stories and testimonies to tell about our journey. And, you know, I want everybody to read and, and not just read my story, but to read everyone's story that, that contributed to the book. Right. The book, We Survive to Thrive, is written by breast cancer survivors. However, this book is not uh, a book strictly for those that are going through right. breast cancer. It's more a book about life lessons because all of us go through things. Yes. Some of us are going through things right now. Absolutely. I am. Absolutely. However, what I know is that we'll get through it. Yes. And uh, in getting through it, that's surviving it. Mm -hmm. We'll make it, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to do more than make it, and I'm sure you do too. Right. And the way that we do that is like Gwen has done, is like the other ladies in the book have done. They have journeyed through it, with faith, knowing that God is with them as they go through the journey, knowing that he will keep and sustain them uh, by surrounding themselves with a lot of love uh, and support and uh, and just holding on and trusting and believing, right? Exactly. Right. And as we do that, uh, as Gwen said, uh, we end up with a testimony. And so Gwen and I are here to share with other breast cancer survivors and others that are going through things that, hey, uh, this is not the end. We're just going through some stuff. The Absolutely. operative word is through. through. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so uh, we uh, just want to uh, encourage others to believe and have hope and, and understand that uh, God's got this. That's right. God's got He's this. Got it. Yes, he does. He's got it. Yes, he does. So Gwen, um, how would you defi uh, define uh, the difference for you between uh, surviving versus thriving? Okay, um, I think that, I know that along the journey, I have met a lot of people uh, because my journey has been so long. Right. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people um, who are diagnosed, they lose faith. They lose faith and they lose hope. Mm -hmm. And um, and even if they get to the other side of through, mm -hmm. even if they get to the other side, rather than to try and take what they've gone through and use it, you know, to somebody else's benefit, yes. they keep it to themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like a big secret. I don't want to share with anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to know mm -hmm. that I've been through this. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and to me, you lose your purpose in doing that. You lose your purpose because there is a reason why you survived that diagnosis. You survived going through maybe surgery or radiation or, or chemotherapy. There is a reason. There is somebody out there who needs to know how did you go through it. How did you manage to get through it and still have hope and still have faith? Mm -hmm. You know, and if you keep it to yourself, then that person that might be might benefit from it, they'll never know. And so now they're they're you know a little apprehensive about it because they you know they're fearful of it because they think, oh my God, this is a death sentence for me. You know, I, I'm done for, and I'm gonna you know, have my little pity party, oh, woe was me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's very important that once you get through this, that you take it and you put it out there. You touch as many people as you can with your story because that's going to encourage them and that's going to give them hope. Well, if she got through it, then I can get through it. And look at her. Like she said, look at her. You know, you when I'm moving through and walking through my my world my life people don't know that i've been through cancer that's right. you know they don't and and oh my god when i tell them i've been through it three times they're like what you mm -hmm. kidding me oh girl you look good i'm like 
praise God, he got me through it each time. And he's the only reason why I'm still here and I look the way that I do. But you have to share that story because there's definitely other people out there who are needing to hear that you've gotten through with faith and with hope. And if you did it and if he did it for you, he will do it for you. I mean, you know, for them. Yes. Um, uh, and to that, that's what helps me to thrive and go through and move and talk to people because I know that there are people out there who need to hear mm -hmm. about my journey. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well said. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. And that is the story I would say for the other ladies uh, that have contributed to We Survive to Thrive. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the story, I mean more the purpose, the, purpose. the mission, as mm -hmm. I said earlier, this is our mission. Mm -hmm. And as we move about, we have been blessed to meet some phenomenal men and women that have journeyed through and to hear each of their stories and see where they are now mm -hmm. in their life. It right. just blesses us, doesn't it? Right, it does. Uh, just truly, truly blesses us. And we're excited about the possibilities, about where we are being led as we move about continuing to share our stories. Right. So Gwen, let me ask you, just to break it down just a little bit further, uh, maybe can you just tell briefly a difference or a change with you mm -hmm. as a result of the journey as it relates to uh, maybe your mind, your body, and your spirit? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. How has, has things changed for you? Well, I think probably um, the thing that's changed most about me is that um, when I first started on this journey, and I really put my journey date back to when I was 26 years old okay. and, and had that first tumor removed. Um, when that happened to me, because I have a history in my family of breast cancer, I decided then that I was going to try and do the things that I had always dreamed of doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I grew up in the city, I grew up in New York, and, um, and I have always dreamed of living somewhere where the weather was nice and warm <laughs> <laughs> most of the year. And, um, and once, I, once I got through that first uh, surgery and everything was, you know, I was given an all clear. I decided that I was going to move to Florida, oh, okay. you know, and, um, and I did, I lived down there for almost a year and, uh, it wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be, but at least I wasn't <laughs> I was living in warm weather. Um, but, uh, I, I kind of decided that, you know, there were some things that I, you know, had a desire to do that I was going to try my best to do those things, you know, to try and live life to the fullest, to the extent that I could, yes. you know, um, after that point. Uh, so I, I love to travel and there was a period of time when, you know, folks who knew me, you know, they, they were not surprised to see me gone two, three times a year. Yeah. <laughs> You know, because I was always, I was always going somewhere, but I was going to places that, you know, that interest me, mm -hmm. you know, or going on a cruise that really interests me because mm -hmm. I love cruising. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just wanted to, to, to do the things that ordinarily I wouldn't have been able to do, you know, working, you know, you work, you have children, you have things that you have to do. But I just thought it was very important to put some you know, put some of the things that I like to do into the mix of my life so that I could, you know, say that, you know, well, you know, I don't know what the future holds. None of us do. But, you know, I know who holds the future and he wants me to, to have my desires, Absolutely. my dreams and my desires. He wants me to have. And so I think pretty much I pretty much fulfilled that in my life. There are maybe one or two things, you know, left that I, you know, haven't done, but you know, I, there's still time. Yes. <laughs> there's still time. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, hopefully, prayerfully, mm -hmm. I'll be able to, to do those, you know, couple of things that, that are still on my list mm -hmm. to do. But I just thought it was very important to keep, you know, my, my mind open and my dreams, you know, 
forefront and do the things that really meant a lot to me. And uh, spiritually, you know, he's just, he's touched me because, you know, I feel like my, my testimony is part of my ministry, you know? Um, and so he's, he's put that, you know, that was something that I wanted to do and, and he worked that out too. So that, you know, I found out, you know, that my church had a, a cancer ministry and, and ever since then, you know, which is now almost 10 years, right. um, you know, I've been participating in the cancer ministry at my church and that, you know, gives me an opportunity to keep out there and keep making, you know, educational things available to our community and to our church family. She said a lot packed in there and I think I kind of summarize it by saying, uh, uh, when has found her sense of purpose. Uh, her sense of purpose, why she was created, I would say. Exactly. And once we realize our sense of purpose and we step out and, and live it and be it, it is a ministry. Mm -hmm. It can be a ministry. Right. So when it's a ministry, right. it's, uh, there are ministering opportunities throughout as we move about the days, as we move about our days. Mm -hmm. And as we live on purpose, that's when we have just joyful lives because that's why God created yes. us, right? Yes, right? Right. So uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I say ditto, ditto, ditto. And I can <laughs> attest to the fact that you allow him to use you. This is one of the hardest working women. She is a medical professional, a nurse by trade. So right. she's a wealth of medical information and practical lived information. So. She is definitely a resource available to all. This has been really great, great, great. Really good. So yes. Uh, I invite you, if you want to read more about Gwen's phenomenal story, as well as our other ladies, to pick up a copy of our book. It's entitled, We Survive to Thrive. It's available on Amazon.com, as well as We Survive to Thrive.com. Uh, we appreciate you listening to us, and we ask you to join us for our next interview that will be coming up next month, and we will uh, uh, publicize who and when. So we thank you, Gwen. I wish you a blessed afternoon, and I thank you for taking time to come share this information with uh, uh, our you're, listening you're audience. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, and you all be blessed.